Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Pastor Brandon live broadcast. And it's good to be here tonight. I want to thank you all for tuning in and for those who will be tuning in. And this is the broadcast that hell hates. The more you listen, the more you know why. Amen. So, um, good to be here tonight. And... Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, but before I do, I'm just going to kind of adjust my camera here a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> so, um, tonight, we're going to be talking about, uh, be sure your sin will find you out. Okay, we're going to kind of go through some scripture and talking about how our sins can find us out. And they can really find us out in many ways, I think. And uh, we're going to kind of, and it won't be a lengthy, it won't be a real lengthy teaching. It'll be kind of a very short, very, very, very short teaching. But I'm going to just kind of go through some scripture, kind of explain through, uh, explain a couple of things and just kind of, kind of get into a couple of examples of, of, of sin finding you out. And, um, we, um, we got, and there's actually a lot to talk, there's actually, but before we do, there's actually a lot I want to talk about because um, some of the stuff that I want to talk about is going to kind of bleed in with the message, okay? It's going to sort of blend in and bleed in and and so, um, but anyways, so we, I've got quite a lesson tonight. So just kind of bear with me. Please pray for me. Please pray for the for the ministry. Pray for the the videos. Uh, pray that people will just receive it, and um, pray that that conviction will happen. And just pray that God will just have His way. Amen. And so <clears throat> I want to kind of start off with uh, some prayer requests, and um, I want you to pray for a fellow sister. Uh, pray for her mother. Um, not doing very well, but please pray for her mother. Uh, pray for strength for this fellow sister. Um, I want you to pr uh, please pray for a fellow brother who uh, has unsaved family members. And um, uh, pray for a fellow sister uh, that uh, her neighbors have passed away. And um, also there's another sister that wants or needs prayer uh, for salvation for her father. Um, please continue to pray for Brother Joey as he still kind of goes through pain. Um, and uh, so pray for him. And uh, please pray for uh, another pr pray uh, for another brother, uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, for his family. Uh, please pray for me and my family and the ministry and just for God's will to be done. And uh, please pray for another sister for salvation for family. Um, and uh, also, too, um, there is a company. There's kind of like a little tiny car shop called the GNS. Uh, please keep them in prayer and pray for kind of their financial needs and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to really get into detail on that, but please pray for them. Um, and then just yes and it, and just that's that's all i had for the prayer request so just if you can keep them and keep them in prayer um you know i i'm not gonna really mention who they are or details of it but that's that's about as details i'm gonna get it so uh please pray for them please pray for me and um we uh you know we all need it amen we all need prayer and i'll be praying for you guys as well <clears throat> Anyways, um, so tonight, um, you know, there's some, there's something I just kind of want to share with you, and, and if you guys are watching this via Facebook, uh, via uh, YouTube, or Sermon Audio, okay, um, there is something I came across on a TV show that uh, might be very interesting, and I, I, I and I really. I'm trying to figure out how all this kind of, you know, plays out. But, you know, I, I there's something caught my attention on a, on a particular TV show that I was watching. And um, I just want to kind of share that with you tonight to kind of, to kind of kick everything off. And then um, 
I kind of want to kind of share about what's kind of going on in our nation right now. And I'm just going to kind of put a warning label, okay? Um, the stuff I'm going to be talking about as per our nation, um, please, 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 okay, uh, do not take my word for things. Do not take everything I say for truth. Um, stuff that I haven't really fully searched, researched it out myself, so I'm just, and as a matter of fact, there might, there's going to be some aspects of it I may not share just because of, the, of, of that fact, but um, <clears throat> they're going to kind of share some basic stuff that I know, and I'm going to kind of give some kind of, I hate to call it theories, but I'm going to kind of kind of give you my input on what I think. Um, so don't take what I say for truth, okay? But, the, and, that, and uh, we'll talk about this too. I'm going to talk about this kind of prior to the message. Now, what I want to share with you tonight, and something that's that really caught my attention, is um, there is a TV show uh, that I came across. It's called... Um, Legends. It's it's. Let's see. Hang on a second. What is it called here? Uh, I gotta look it look it up on the internet database. Uh, but there is this um, there is this TV show called Legends of Depo of Tomorrow, and it's kind of one of those TV shows that's it's it's DC Comics and it kind of it has a lot of ties with it ties into like. Uh, you know, uh, Supergirl, and it ties into like uh, Flash, and then all these other. It, it just it kind of all ties in together. It's kind of, kind of uh, doing what Marvel is doing a little bit. But I was watching this Legends of Tomorrow, and it's just really the whole the whole thing is like time travel. You know, they <coughs> you have this Time Master who has this time ship and they they have to kind of go back and forth in time to restore like the timeline and and stuff like that and um but um it's i don't know it's 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 really interesting i i don't want to say I, I wouldn't really recommend it just because there is a lot of aspects to it that i just don't really care for anymore i just really don't care for period um anyways um but there's a show called legend of tomorrow and I came across this particular episode on the fourth, no, not the fourth, the third season. And this was done in uh, 2017. And uh, there is this instance they have to go back in time um, to basically stop all these apparitions from like all these different time apparitions from happening and they're trying to restore these these timelines and, and to, to kind of restore everything back to normal again well <clears throat> it ends up that they go back in time and they're trying to help out a man named Barry well a little and and and, and when you first see it you think like okay well like maybe Barry Allen the Flash and and stuff, but it turns out that they're going back in time to help spare a man named Barry Obama, which basically is Barack Obama. Okay, so but his first name is Barry, but he really goes by Barack Obama. Okay, but it's Barack Obama in his younger years, and you have this. I don't want to call it, I don't want to say a 500 pound gorilla, but you have this really ginormous King Kong sized gorilla named Grodd. And Grodd is um, this really large King Kong gorilla that has the ability to influence people, um, you know, with his mind. Okay. He, he is uh, telekinetic telekinetic powers and this gorilla can talk in his mind and people can hear him and Grodd was actually the the produce 
he was the actually he was the fruit of a man by the name of Harrison Wells who kind of did this whole particle accelerator. Well, anyways, so Gorilla Grodd, he's this really huge gorilla. Hey, I, I, hey, I like gorillas like just as much as the next person, but a telepathic gorilla, I, I, I just, I don't know that that whole thing just throws me off. Anyways, but this there is this telepathic gorilla. And uh, he's trying to get after Barack Obama. Okay, like he got a hold of him. He he wants to like take him out, like kill him. Okay, but here's what's really interesting about the whole thing. Okay, it's what Grodd says, and what Grodd says is like wordplay and mocking. Uh, I, I don't want to say mocking, but it's like wordplay. To what's going on at what to what's going on in our nation. Okay. Let me read you what Grodd says, okay? Now, Grodd, the, the telepathic gorilla, has Barack Obama in his hands and he's trying to squeeze the daylights out of him. So he's trying to basically kill him. And so <clears throat> while doing this, uh, Gorilla Grodd. Okay, this is what he says. He says, "You will not escape Grodd. You will not. You will not escape. Grodd will complete his mission." Okay, here's the most important part of that whole line. He says, "After that, time to make America Grodd again." Isn't that interesting? It's all wordplay. Grodd says, time to make America Grodd again. It's as if they're kind of mocking Trump a little bit. How Trump says, time to make America great again. Grodd, the gorilla, this telepathic gorilla, says, time to make America Grodd again. And he says this while he's, he's trying to choke out Obama in his hands. This big old telepathic gorilla has Obama, Barack Obama in his hands and he says, time to make Grodd, time to make America Grodd again. It's wordplay is what it is. But I, that really caught my attention. Okay. But here's what Barry Obama says. That's, that's a character's name, but really it's, he goes by Barack. Okay. But Obama says, clearly you have some grievance, but perhaps we can look for, for a common ground. And then you see Grodd grabbing him, and Obama says, or not. You know, it's interesting on in how these TV shows are getting a grasp of things. And I, I'm not sure what to make of it. So if, if you guys buy either Facebook or YouTube or Sermon Audio can kind of piece that together, help me piece that together for me. Well, not for me, but help me piece that together to, to kind of come to a conclusion. I really think it might be something that might be happening to where, you know, it's kind of like a, a made fun of kind of play where, you know, you've got Trump trying to, you know, get all these Obamaites the people that are in office kind of arrested and, and, and thrown in jail. We, we don't know. But <clears throat> but it's really interesting that this gorilla named Grodd says, time to make America Grodd again. Isn't that interesting? So if you guys have any insight on that, uh, please feel, feel free to message me, email me, or whatever. Just... If you have any insight of what, what what you think that means, maybe there isn't. Maybe there is really not a meaning behind it. But I just, it was something that really caught my attention because it was kind of like, you know, they're taking something that Trump would normally say and they would try to, they, they, they wordplay it a little bit differently to kind of make fun of it a little bit. It's just really interesting in how a TV show like that would ever, you know, would do that. Amen. So anyways, if, if, if there is an insight, please let me know. Uh, if, if it's something that you think you can help me piece together, that'd be even great. Amen. But anyways, I want to share I wanted to share that because I thought that was very interesting. And I, I wasn't quite sure if there was something to it or if maybe if I'm just making it something more than I really should. 
Anyways, um, but with that, and speaking of Trump, because <clears throat> this is the next part I want to get into, okay? Um, so speaking of Trump, so right now, we, um, there's going to be, according to sort, according to what I've been hearing, um, from friends and elders and, 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 and just fellow siblings in the Lord is that they're going to start making, um, arrests and they're going to start indicting people. Okay. Now I'm not quite sure about this. This is something I have to research on, but I've heard that they're planning on making like 61,000 some indictments. And it's kind of rumored, it's rumored that Trump is going to uh, uh, use the military or to help or to use part of the military to help make these arrests. And um, I'm not even sure if that's what's going to happen and stuff like that. But <clears throat> here's the thing. There's also speculation too that if 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 if, if everything of that sort is is true, and Trump does actually use some of the military, the question is the the, the question begs, um, will he, will Trump, um, actually institute martial law? Will he institute martial law? And one of the, one of the things that I was thinking of, you know, with the previous administration and the Trump administration. When you take a look at Obama's administration, the military didn't like him very well. And so we thought that maybe at that, at that time that he would maybe, you know, he would probably get away with trying to input martial law, but the military was against him. So it would be very hard for him to do so. But I had thought that there might, there was a, a strong possibility that Trump could actually get away with doing something like that because the military um, is backing, I mean, he's, I mean, he's got these, I mean, the military like Trump. They like him. They'll basically do whatever he says. So, <clears throat> with all these arrests that they're going to make, is it possible that Trump can initiate martial law in our nation? And by the way, under martial law, your rights, my rights, and every one single one of our rights are suspended because under martial law, it's do this or else. Martial law is a very strict law. And, um, but is it possible that Trump could initiate martial law into our nation? Is it possible that he could initiate martial law um, due to the fact that you have the left-wingers and um, probably would take a look at all these arrests and start getting angry and start, will and will start looting and start smack, you know, start, you know, burglarizing, looting, protesting, creating all sorts of chaos. And of course, when you have that much chaos, you're going to have to have you have to have some sort of order. So, if it's true that if it's true that Trump will use some of the military to help make some of these indictment arrests, could it be that Trump could initiate martial law out of the chaos that this will probably cause. It's a possibility. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it will happen, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. We don't know. Only time will tell. Um, we really don't know what what's going to happen. But what I can tell you for certain is there are things... I don't know. I just there's just some there's something coming. I whether it is good or bad, I know not. But I know that there is something huge coming and I don't know I and I really don't know what it is. Possibly with with all these indictments, that could possibly be it. The result of that, the the, the end result of these arrests. Okay? And so we don't know how the, how it's going to turn out. Only the good Lord knows. Amen. But here's the thing. The reason why they're going to indict a whole bunch of people and have them arrested is due to the fact, is due to the fact, um, is due to the fact of their sin, their, 
their pedo, their pedo, their, their pedophilia sins, their sick pedophile behavior is coming out. And, if, and it's all coming out. And, and all this stuff is coming out. Just so happens under the Trump administration, all of this illegal activity that the Luciferian, the Luciferians are committing is all coming out. Which is why there's all these there's probably all these indictments and <clears throat> All these people are going to probably be getting arrested for it. So, with that said, okay, let me tell you something. If you don't repent of your sin, your sin will find you out. And that is going to be a result after, and, and, and here's the thing, maybe I'm wrong on this. But here's the thing, for a believer, God gives, he gives everyone a space to repent. Not just the believer, but he gives both believer and non-believer a space to repent. Okay? But, I think that after that space of repent, if you, if you still haven't repented of your sin, for a believer, God's going to continue dealing with you until it needs to come out. Okay. For a non-believer, different story. Okay. If they seem to be getting away with it for a while, all this stuff could be just all this stuff could just flat out. I mean, God's gonna probably allow all this stuff to come out. Amen. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Okay. Uh, we're gonna be talking about your sin finding you out. Um Hang on a second. I want you guys to turn with me to the book of num to the book of Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter uh, Numbers chapter. Uh, hang on a second. Here we go. I got my note. I got my little little page of notes here. But turn with me to Numbers chapter thirty two verse twenty three. Numbers chapter thirty two verse twenty three. Okay. Um, let's see here. Actually, hang on a second. Oh no, I'm already there. Okay, so I I, I, I think I said 33. I, I I'm I apologize. It's actually Numbers 32 verse 23. Okay, so this is what it says. It says, "But if ye, but if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out." Okay, now I, I want to back up a bit. Let's let's actually back up to verse 22, and um. Actually, no, let's, let's go to verse 20. Let's start in verse 20, okay? It says, And Moses said unto them, If you will do this thing, if you will go on before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over, to, over Jordan before the Lord, until he hath driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land should be your possession before the Lord. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Okay? So, here's the thing. When a believer, when a person sins, okay, but let's, let's, let's stick with a believer, okay? With us believers... If we have wronged, if we've sinned and fallen short, okay, the Lord is going to give us the space to repent, but he's going to chasten us. He's going to chasten us and correct us and rebuke us. But he's going to do it in such a loving way, okay? Now, if we, choose, now if we repent, well, that's good, okay? We need to repent. But if we don't, Eventually, it will come down to the point that our sin, <sighs> sorry, it will come to the point where our sin will find us out. Okay? Now, we don't know where that point might be. Okay? But our sin will find us out if we don't repent. Amen? So, 
Um, turn with me to Genesis chapter 44, verse 16. Genesis 44, 16. This is 44, 16. Okay. I'm going to kind of move this over a little bit. I've got, I've got my sound effects. i got to get up and running. I haven't really had the time. I really hadn't, I really haven't done that yet. So I'm going to do that. But while I'm doing that, turn, uh, can, uh, turn with me to Genesis, Genesis 44, 16. Genesis 44, verse 16. It says, and Judah said, what shall we say unto the, unto my Lord? What shall we speak, or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. Okay? Now listen. Okay? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Okay? Iniquity is sin. So God found it out. And God knew about it. Right? God, God is all an all-knowing God. He knows from the beginning and the end. But what this is saying is that that God hath found out the iniquity of his of his servants, meaning that the iniquity is being sent out, is being shown. Okay, now how does this apply to what's going on now? Well, you see, um, it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention some names here, and Hell is probably not gonna like me for it, but I don't care because Hell can hate me all they want. But we see the, hang on a second, hang on a second, uh, okay, so we see uh, the infamous Clinton family, which Hillary Clinton is a, a witch, she is a witch, uh, Hillary Clinton and the Clinton, the whole Clinton clan, um, they have been getting away with murder. They've been getting away with th with with thievery. They have been getting away with so much stuff. They've even they think they've got away with trying to steal the election in 2016 and breaking rules and breaking laws. But their sin under Trump their sin is about to find them out. And if it finds them out, okay, they're going to go to prison for a long time. And Obama, he should have never been president. He was, he should have, for some reason, why we even got him elected in, they, that we, we shouldn't have, um, he should have never have been president, okay? Because, you know, under Obama, things got quite explosive. That's a, you know, that's a pun intended. Anyways, um, but under the Obama administration, things got really bad. And here's the thing. He was an Islamic president that we had in this nation. Now, I know some people are going to probably fight me on this. And they're going to uh, probably not like me for this. But Obama wasn't just a first black Islamic president that we've had. But he also was a sodomite. Okay? Okay. I believe that Obama was a sodomite. Okay, and is and still is, which makes his so-called wife Michelle or Miguel um not a woman but a man. That that is a transvestite. Okay? Now, I'm going to back up my claim. Okay? I'm not just going to just leave it at that and not back up my claim. Here's why I say Obama was queer, okay? Um, 
Obama, there was a man, okay, that came out. Uh, oh, I can't remember, but there's a, there's a. I have to look it up, but I I don't I don't know if it's still on there or if they've taken it down. But there is a video of a man named Larry Sinclair, and Larry Sinclair came out and admitted to having homosexual relations with Obama while he was a senator. Okay? Homosexual relations. There have also been people who've testified that knew him while growing up that he would actually have homosexual relations with older white men for crack. So Obama was not just queer, but he was a crackhead. Now, unless if he repented from it, which I don't think he did, then that would make the so-called wife that he has a transvestite. And there's actually there's actually things about Miguel or Mich Michelle, which is Miguel, that would can, would make you think that that's a transvestite due to the fact that uh, an Ad Adam's apple is more of a masculine trait, broad shoulders, big hands. Um, I mean, and sure, there are women that do have big hands, but the Adam's apple thing, you can't really escape that because uh, you don't really see women with Adam's apples. That that's that's a that's a masculine trait. Um, but there's other things to it, okay? But that's why I say Obama was queer, okay? So he was the first gay president we've had, which is ironic because he's a Muslim, and Muslims look they frown upon they frown upon um, sodomites. And um, but anyways, but here's the thing, okay? So oh the, the there's speculation with the fact that oh, the, the, all the illegal things that Obama has done, that he may actually be, he may be, he might be, the Obamas might be arrested and um, they might rescind his presidency, which means they will make it so that he was, it was like he was never president. Okay, they take him off the president's list. They would um, get rid of all of the executive orders he put out. In addition, his health care bill would be completely gone. We don't have to worry about Obama that that um, that Obamacare anymore, because um, you know. But anyways, but he, but the thing is, you have all these uh, talking. <laughs> Democrats that are donkeys, which ironically their symbol is a donkey, um, but you see that. The, but the thing is, is that um, these peoples, th these people, their sins, they're starting. It's, it's all starting to come out now. Okay, th that's why I think you have all. That's why I. That's why. That's why I think you have all these, these arrests, all these indictments. Because their sins are finding them out. And it's because they didn't want to repent. And by the way, these people are Luciferians. Okay? These, these people that are getting indicted are Luciferians. Luciferian pedophiles is what they are. Okay? So, um, turn with me to Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22. Proverbs 5, 22. I got a phone. Oh, I think I passed it. Hang on a second. Proverbs 522. Um it says his own iniquity shall take the his own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Okay, his iniquity shall take the wicked himself. Okay, that means that the wicked, which is these Luciferian elitists, okay, um, their own iniquities shall take, oh, 
means their own iniquities are going to find them out. Okay? Judgment's coming upon these, upon these pedophiles. Okay? His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. Okay? That's what's that is kind of what's going to be happening with all these indictments that are going to that are about to be happening. And by the way, I think the left wingers are going to take a look at all these indictments and they're going to say that's a bunch of that's a bunch of that's a bunch of hogwash. You know, they should have never been arrested and and, and they're it's going to upset them so bad to where they're going to cause havoc in our nation. Our nation is on the brink of destruction and as 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 fragile as our economy is, okay, a civil war can take this nation back centuries, okay? A civil war can, do, can be quite damning to our economy. That's how fragile it is, okay? Um, but here's the thing. For all those who are believers in God, let me let me tell you something. God will take care of his people. Okay? God will take care of his people. Don't don't be afraid. Um, turn with me to Isaiah 59:12. Isaiah 59:12. It says, for our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us, for our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. Okay? Your sins can testify against you, and by that, your sins will find you out. Okay? When your, test, when your sins test, testify against you, it means that your sins have found you out. And by the way, that's what's going to happen to all these people who are going to get arrested for their pedophilia. Okay? Their sins will find them out. Okay? There's no ifs, ands, or, or buts about it. Okay? Their sins will find them out. Okay? Now listen. Jonah. Okay? His sins found him out. His, his, rebellion, his rebellion against God found his... His sin found him out, okay? Turn with me to Jonah chapter 1, verse 7. Jonah 1, 7. Okay? Um, it says, And they said, Everyone who is fellow, come and let us cast lots, that we may know for who for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Okay? So Jonah rebelled against God. Okay? Jonah rebelled. Jonah had rebelled against God, and because of it, there was a storm that came upon him and the, and everybody on this ship going to Tarshish, and it affected everybody. Okay, and Jonah fessed up. Okay, his sin found him out, and he fessed up. Okay. But the Lord had mercy on him, and the Lord forgave him. As a matter of fact, the Lord redirected him, and he eventually became obedient again. Okay? But Jonah did wrong, and because Jonah did wrong, his sin found him out, and his sin affected others. Okay? Believer, listen to me. If you think that your sins cannot will not affect other people... You're mistaken. Okay? Your sins will affect others and you may not know it. Just like Jonah. His sins almost cost the lives of everybody on that ship, on that boat. But God spared them. As a matter of fact, the other people on that ship, I believe, believed on God because it says that they had offered offerings up to God. Okay, so that's number one. I want to just kind of share with you. Now, number two, I want us to I want us to take a look at, and this is going to be the last part of the sermon. So, 
Um, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 11. 1 Samuel. Okay. Now, Jonah's sin found him out. Guess what? So did Saul. Saul's sin found him out. He wasn't even a... And Saul was a disobedient... He was disobedient and most likely probably wasn't saved. But Saul's sin found him out. Okay? Now, while you are turning with me to 1 Samuel 15...